We are about to see a series of maps which depict the geologic history of North America. They were prepared by Dr. Ron Blakey, founder of Colorado Plateau Geosystems. They were purchased by Ted Schuldenberg and annotated by Don Whitehill, both of Kerrville. Let's get oriented. The 550 MA on the left is shorthand for 550 million years ago. All maps are annotated to show Kerrville and Texas. Where possible, they also show the location of one or more countries on other continents. Each map shows North America in its present position, but keep in mind that this and all other tectonic plates have wandered across the planet throughout their history. The estimated location of the equator is shown on some, but not all, maps. At this time, Kerrville was believed to be about 30 degrees south of the equator and rotated about 90 degrees so that the Texas Panhandle pointed east rather than north. Land masses are shown in shades of brown. Oceans are shown in dark blue, while shallow seas on continents are shown in light blue. For a geologist, a continent is a large land mass composed of rocks having a different composition from those on the ocean floor. In effect, they float on denser underlying material. So for the geologist, even if a continent is covered by a shallow sea, it is still a continent. North America looked quite different at this time. Our western states, as well as western Canadian provinces and portions of some east coast states had not yet been formed. But Greenland and even parts of the UK and Ireland were part of North America. This might be a good time to point out that as much as 1.3 billion years ago, that's billion with a B, and long before the time represented by this map, the oldest rocks in the hill country were formed. They can be found nearby in Llano and Mason counties. About 200 million years later, they were altered into metamorphic rocks during a tectonic plate collision between North America and parts of South America and Africa. Enchanted rock was also in place at that time. That is when an ancient supercontinent called Rodinia was formed. About 650 million years ago, after another 400 million years, Rodinia began to break apart. In the lower right, you can still see most of South America after it had separated from Rodinia. The next few maps show that Kerrville as well as much of North America, was underwater in a shallow sea. The Ellenberger limestone, which is the primary aquifer for Fredericksburg, is one of the rock units formed towards the end of this time. As South America moves out of the picture, a string of islands is approaching North America from the right. This is an island arc, which formed when two oceanic plates collided. The arc will bump into North America and form a chain of mountains from Greenland all the way south to Georgia. Two small continental plates are heading our way from the upper right. They are fragments of what are now parts of Western Europe. A northwest to southeast ridge has formed across Texas. Kerrville is near the southeastern end and was probably high and dry most of this time. An island arc and Western Europe now collide with North America and form a mountain range that extends along the east coast from Greenland to the northeastern United States. This is the beginning of the supercontinent that geologists call Pangaea, from the Greek language and meaning all the earth. North America is slowly turning counterclockwise so that the Texas Panhandle is now pointing northeast rather than east. An island arc on the west coast and another on the east, together with still another chunk of Europe, will soon collide with North America. Gondwana, a supercontinent in its own right, consisting of Africa, South America, Antarctica, Australia and India, is nearing North America and will soon collide with it to add to Pangaea. 
The next few maps show the final assembly of Pangaea. First to collide was Africa with the southeastern states. This resulted in formation of the Appalachian Mountains. That slowed the plate movements so that when South America collided with the Gulf Coast and Texas, the mountains were never as high. Later, they were eroded and covered by younger rocks. The remnants are now buried in East Texas, as near to us as Bandera, and extending all the way to Marathon in West Texas, where they reemerge. North America has also been on the move, and Kerrville gets within a few degrees of the equator. A seaway has developed in the southwestern United States. It formed a somewhat restricted ocean in West Texas and southeastern New Mexico, with only a narrow channel joining it to the open ocean to the west. This is the Permian Basin where so much oil and gas has been produced. The seaway closed at the end of this period, as did the Paleozoic era. That time marked the greatest known extinction of life ever recorded, with an estimated 90% of all plant and animal species becoming extinct. Pangaea shows some signs of wanting to break apart, but never quite manages to do so. Several rifts form near our present east coast from Connecticut to the Carolinas, but they fail to separate the continent. The eventual split will be later and a little further east. The breakup of Pangaea has now begun for real. It starts with the separation of Gondwana from North America. Thick salt deposits formed in the narrow and restricted Gulf of Mexico that was just beginning to open at this time. Much of the salt was later raised into the many salt domes which now dot the Gulf Coast. Dinosaurs were flourishing on land and in the seas. The separation continues. North America was also moving northward, and Kerrville is now near its present position of 30 degrees north. The first known birds have been found from this time interval. We are beginning an interesting and important time period. As Pangaea continues to break up, a north-south seaway develops in the middle of North America, from the Arctic Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. Most of the rocks in the hill country, and from San Antonio to Fort Stockton, were formed from material deposited in a shallow sea at this time. Local formations include the Edwards limestone, which caps our hills, the tawny rounded hills of the underlying Glen Rose formation, and the Hensel sand, which is one of Kerrville's main aquifers. The North Atlantic widens as Africa and South America begin separating from one another. Island arcs continue to plaster themselves onto the west coast of North America. This is the end of the Mesozoic era and the beginning of the Cenozoic. It is a very important time. A huge bolide or meteor struck the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. The devastation was felt worldwide. The most important result was the extinction of not only the dinosaurs, but as many as 75% of all plant and animal species as well. The North Atlantic continues to widen as both Europe and Greenland separate further from North America and from each other. By the middle of this time sequence, Kerrville has moved into its current location. 30 degrees north of the equator and with the Texas Panhandle pointing due north. Mountain ranges in western North America continue to grow, a direct effect of the ongoing collision between the Pacific Plate and North America. This in turn caused a big change in depositional environment and rock type in Texas. During the Cretaceous period, carbonate rocks were deposited over shallow continental seas across much of Texas. The rise of the Rocky Mountains resulted in the accumulation of a thick sand and shale sequence in the Gulf of Mexico and on the Texas coastal plain. The time intervals on these maps are much shorter, 
and some are divided into thousands of years ago, represented by the abbreviation K.A. We have entered the Pleistocene epoch, better known as the Ice Age. During this time period, there were four major and several minor advances and retreats of ice sheets, which covered much of North America and Scandinavia.